The Harold Perry Show. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And now, Harold Perry as Honest Harold, the homemaker. Well, let's look in on the little town of Melrose Springs, home of that popular radio entertainer, Honest Harold. Although New Year's is long since past, Harold has just made a resolution. He's through with women. You said it. Especially a certain woman, Laura Bell Breckenridge. That's the one, all right. She's fickle. It's morning now, and the new Honest Harold is just finishing breakfast. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, Harold, I'm sure you'll make up with Flora Bell again. No, I won't, Mother. Not after the way she stood me up in the moose room last Saturday night and went dancing off with that skinny Texan. Well, I'm sure she didn't mean anything. My mother, we hadn't even finished our dinners. I had to eat both desserts. And I hate peach cobbler. <laughs> oh, that's too bad. Yes, sir. Flora Bell just have to learn she can't toy with my affections. She thinks I'm going to be at her beck and call. She's got another thing coming. <laughs> You're going to miss her, Harold. Flora Bell is such an attractive girl. Well, in a way. She looked so lovely the last time you took her out in her off-the-shoulder taffeta. Yeah. And her beautiful blonde hair. Uh-huh. And her big blue eyes. Zeef, please, Mother. <laughs> Suppose she phones you, son. What shall I tell her? Phones me? Well, uh, just tell her I'm not in. She thinks I'm going to jump every time. Oop, there's a telephone. Excuse me, Mother. Oh, <laughs> didn't mean to knock the chair over. I'll get it. <laughs> Bump my head. <laughs> I'll be right back, Mother. Hello, Flora Bell? Huh? Who's this? A survey? What's my favorite radio program? What do you think? <laughs> Goodbye. Was that Flora Bell? No, Mother. Harold, why don't you call her? No, I won't. I'm just going to let her suffer. <laughs> Good morning, Station KSJP. Mr. Peabody, I'll connect you. Uh, good morning, Glory. Oh, good morning, Harold. Have you and Flora Bell made up yet? No, we haven't. And please understand this, Glory. I'm not in the least bit interested in that young lady. It's all over. Say fini. Say what? That's French, Gloria. Oh, oh, Harold, do you mean you're not the least bit interested in Flora Bell? That's right. Well, what would you say if I told you that she's been phoning you every ten minutes? Well, maybe I'll drop by and see her. She's really been phoning me every ten minutes? No, I just wanted to see what you'd say. <laughs> that was a sneaky trick, Gloria. Oh, I'm sorry, Harold. Oh, well, that's all right. Oh, I forgot. Mr. Peabody wants to see you in his office. Oh, one blow after another. Wonder what my dear boss wants. Je ne sais pas, pa, bon ami. What? That's French, Harold. That's terrible, Gloria. <laughs> I'll see you later. Well... Might as well see what Peabody wants. Probably wants to share his yogurt cocktail with me. <laughs> Enter. Enter. What a prissy pants. <laughs> Do you want to see me, Stanley? Just a moment, Hemp. Can't you see I'm drying my pen wiper? Uh, oh, <laughs> pardon me. And will you please stop that hissing? You're scaring my tropical fish. I hate him. Hemp, I received a letter this morning about you. Oh, is that Crank in Charlieville complaining about my singing, upsetting his chickens again? No, this letter's from the Red Cross. Red Cross? Didn't they like my blood? <laughs> I don't know, Hemp. They've asked me to put you in charge of the Red Cross fund drive in Melrose Springs. Me? Yes. They've heard your public interest projects on your radio program, and they feel you're just the man for the job. Well, <laughs> And I must say I agree with them, Harold. You do? Well, thank you, Stanley. Fine fellow. <laughs> and just to start your campaign off with a bang, here's my check for $50. Well, thanks very much. What an admirable character. Uh, glad to do it, Harold. 
And good luck. I know you'll make a fine showing. Well, I'll do my best. See you later, Stanley. Well, Stanley was certainly nice today. Gosh, it'd be awful if I got to like him. <laughs> oh, well. I can hate him again after the Red Cross drive. <laughs> <laughs> Red Cross literature certainly opens your eyes. They sure do a lot of good things. Give aid in all sorts of disasters, financial assistance to servicemen and veterans. They train 20 million first aiders. Harold. Yes, Mother? Lunch is almost ready. All right. Mother, I'm just trying to think of some way to show the people what the Red Cross does. Let's see. Maybe I could organize a first aid class. I could be the instructor. You, Harold. Hmm? Well, I was pretty good at bandaging when I was a Boy Scout. Oh, yes. I remember the time you bandaged the Scout Master to a tree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I think I will get up a first aid class, Mother. We can have it tonight, right here in the living room. All right. I've got this Red Cross booklet to help me. And for a start, we'll pretend we all have sprained wrists, huh? Then we can pair off in partners and bandage each other. <laughs> I, uh, I think I'll invite Mr. Walker for my partner. <laughs> Mother, are you still sweet on that laughing hyena? Oh, Harold, you don't really know him. He has a lot of hidden charm. Yeah, it's hidden, all right. Probably keeps it under that beard. <laughs> well, all right. You can invite Mr. Walker, Mother. But remember, this is a first aid class, not a romance clinic. Oh, yes, Harold. It's too bad Florabelle isn't coming tonight. Florabelle? She uh, might be very interested in... Uh, First aid. Well, I don't know. I was never going to see her again. Oh, but this is different, Harold. As you say, this is a first aid class, not a romance clinic. Well, that is right. Yes, I ought to invite her. I shouldn't let my pride stand in the way of doing a good job. Oh, that's right, son. In fact, I might drop over and ask her today, right now, uh, for the good of the campaign, of course. Uh, of course, Harold. <laughs> <laughs> See you later, Mother. Hope Flora Bell is in. Because you'll have to understand that this is strictly a business call. Coming. <laughs> She's home. Steady, Harold. Why, Harold Ham, what a delightful surprise. Come on in. Miss Breckenridge, what I have to say can be said right here. All right. But if you insist, I'll come in. <laughs> you haven't been over to see me for a long time, Tootsie Roll. <laughs> Flora Bell, I want you to understand that this is not a social call. Oh. Strictly business. Mm. I've just been appointed director of the Red Cross Drive in Melrose Springs. Yes, I heard about that, Harold. And I think it's just wonderful. <laughs> <clears throat> Thank you. And I'm conducting a first aid class at my house tonight, and I just thought maybe you'd like to attend. I'd love to come over to your house tonight, Tootsie Roll. <laughs> <laughs> now, this doesn't mean that I'm making up with you, Flora Bell. Uh, Miss Breckenridge, it's just that I consider it my public duty to invite you. Oh, Harold. Well, see you at the first aid class, my house, 8 o'clock. Bring your own mercurochrome. Uh, Harold, hmm? I've never been to a first aid class before. What are we supposed to do? Do? Well, we choose partners and then bandage each other. Oh, sounds like a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, better be going. Uh, Harold, couldn't you and I have a little practice in first aid beforehand? Huh? <laughs> Let's just pretend you're the patient and I'm the nurse and I'm going to take your pulse. Pulse? Well, uh, uh... Now, come close to me, Harold. <laughs> All right. Now, let me hold your hand. There. <laughs> well, I declare, your pulse is chugging away like the Chattanooga choo-choo. It is? Well, clear the track. Choo-choo-choo-choo-choo-choo. <laughs> I bet if I were to kiss you, it would even go faster than that. Yeah. Well, maybe we'll try it tonight. Oop. See you tonight, Harold. Yeah. 
Well, I guess I better be going. Oh, uh, Harold, I forgot something. What's that for, Belle? Here's my check for the Red Cross. Yeah, oh, thanks. <laughs> and here's something for you. Mm-hmm. Oh, Harold! That's your receipt. <laughs> hey, I like this Red Cross work. <laughs> <laughs> Aid class sounds like it's going to be a lot of fun tonight with Flora Bell there. Say, maybe I can put a band aid around her finger. No, better not. She'll think we're engaged. <laughs> hello, Harold. Oh, hello, Doc. Howdy, boy. How are you, Pete? Congratulations on your Red Cross job. Thanks. By the way, you're both invited to my house tonight. We're going to have a Red Cross first aid class. Oh, well, I'll be there, boy. Since I'm a veterinarian, Harold, I suppose you want me to be the instructor. Well, well thanks, Doc, but I'm going to be the teacher. Uh, all right, Har. Now, Doc, you can be my assistant. Oh, oh, good. I'll bring my distemper serum. <laughs> yeah, you better do that. Uh, what are we going to do at the class, Harold? Well, I thought we'd pair off in twos and practice bandaging and things like that. Who are you going to pair off with, boy? Hmm? <laughs> oh, I'll probably have Flora Bell for my partner. <laughs> Hope I get a pretty partner. Oh, you will, Doc. You got Pete. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, now, Doc. You can just close your eyes and imagine that I'm Yvonne de Carload. (laughs) De Carload? You have a cold, Yvonne? Nope. There's not a cough in a carload. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, brother. Ain't that a doozy, though? (laughs) You're a couple of doozies. See you tonight, Yvonne. Mother, got everything all laid out for our first aid class tonight. How does it look? Just fine, son. And you look very professional in that white coat. Ah, uh, thanks. Borrowed this from the barber shop. <laughs> Guess I better take these clippers out of the pocket. <laughs> and you've got everything laid out so neatly on the table. Yeah, I think we've got everything we need here. Bandages, splints, adhesive tape, marmalade. Marmalade? Now, how did that get in there? Oh, I wasn't wearing my glasses, Harold. Huh? I thought it was Vaseline. Yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, Harold. Huh? Will you let me know when Mr. Walker gets here? I'm going to my room and uh, print up a little. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> uh, <yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mother. What does Mother see in that old... Bet that's Flora Bell. Come in. Now you can start the party. Walker's walked in. <laughs> he gods, there he is. Well, hello, Sonny. Oh, hello, Mr. Walker. Hey, you look pretty spiffy in that white coat. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Didn't know you was running a barbershop on the side. <laughs> what? Who? Am I next? <laughs> now look here, Walker. Just give me an egg shampoo, Sonny. A little bacon on the side. <laughs> hello, Mr. Walker. Oh, hello, Mrs. Hemp. <laughs> Mr. Walker. Would you like to see the Afghan I'm making? Oh, I'd be delighted, ma'am. Strap your straps, sonny. I'll be back for a shave later. (laughs) (laughs) Something tells me that laughing hyena is going to give me trouble tonight. I'd like... Hey, got a wonderful idea. (laughs) I'll use him for my bandage demonstration. I'll put so many bandages on him, he'll look like a mummy. (laughs) That ought to keep him quiet. Hello, Harold. Hello, Doc. Evening, boy. Oh, hello, Harold. Yeah, hello, Flora Bell. <laughs> oh, my, you look dignified in that white coat. Mm-hmm. Just like a doctor in those cigarette ads, always testing T-zones and things. <laughs> <Yeah>. <clears throat> the class will now come to order. Mother, Mr. Walker. Yeah, coming, sonny. You start without me, son. I'll make some hot cocoa for the intermission. Oh, oh I just love uh, cocoa. Quiet, folks, quiet. Your attention, please. First, I'm going to demonstrate the various types of bandaging. I'd like someone to be my patient, anybody at all. How about you, Mr. Walker? Me? You betcha. 
Look, I'm your boy, sonny. Uh, here's yeah. where I get them. First, I will demonstrate, folks, how to apply a leg splint. We put the splints on the leg like this. Yeah, uh, just, just a minute, Junior. What? You're doing that all wrong. How do you know? How do I know? I was a pharmacist mate in the Spanish-American War. That's how I know. Now, let me show you how it's done. Lie down. Yep, but... Lie down, sonny. Well, okay, but... Mm, nah, that's it, that's it. Now, students, here's the way the splint should be applied. I'll slap one on this side. Here. And slap the other one here. Watch where you're slapping, Walker. <laughs> Then you take the bandage and you wrap it around and around and around. There. Now, that's the way you apply a leg splint, sonny. Well, that's fine. That's fine. Now, will you please take this thing off my leg, Walker? Hey, as long as you're down there, might as well bandage the other one. Zoink. And the bandage goes round and round. Oh. Well, there's the other leg. Yeah, well, that's well, wonderful. All right, Mr. Walker, now you can take off the bandages. I can't move. Good. Now for your arm. What? Might as well bandage your head, too. That's the weak part. <laughs> Here you are, bandaged from head to foot. He sure is. I declare, boy, you look just like that King Tut. <laughs> Peekaboo, Harry. Are you in there? <laughs> Naturally, I'm in here. I can't get up. Will somebody get me out? Hot chocolate's ready. Oh, intermission. Oh. Let's eat. What? Take my arm, Miss Flora Bell. Miss Flora Bell? Oh, now don't you worry, Tootsie Roll. I'll be back after a while. But, but... Don't go away, sonny. <laughs> <laughs> Return for the second act of our story, Honest Harold, in just a moment. Two headline attractions are coming your way on CBS later this evening. Judy Garland will make one of her joyful guest appearances on the Bing Crosby Show. Then CBS will bring you the world's heavyweight championship fight between defender Ezard Charles and challenger Jersey Joe Walcott. Judy Garland and Bing, the Ezard Charles Joe Walcott bout. CBS cordially invites you to hear them both on most of these same stations later this evening. And now back to Harold Perry as Honest Harold, the homemaker. Well, Harold's first aid class didn't work out so well last night, but this morning he's back on the job as director of the Red Cross Fund Drive. Right now, we find him at the radio station, just finishing his daily homemaker's broadcast. A woman likes to be told that she never will grow. And the more and more you tell her, more and more you will discover. A woman likes to be told Oh, yes, a woman likes to be told. And so till tomorrow morning at the same time, girls, this is Honest Harold signing off. And remember, if we all do our part, we can put this Red Cross drive over the top in Melrose Springs. So long until tomorrow. See you tomorrow, Yasha. So long, boys. Oh, Doc, what are you doing down here, you old mule medical? Well, I got something to discuss with you. I wanted to talk to you last night at the first aid class, but uh, you was all tied up. <laughs> Please, Doc, cut out the comedy, and I use the word loosely. Oh. <clears throat> well, Harold, I got a great idea to help your Red Cross drive. Oh, what's that? Well, as Red Cross director, why don't you organize a flood emergency plan? Flood emergency? What for? Well, to be prepared in case Boomer Dam breaks. Doc, you know that Boomer Dam breaks every year? Nothing ever happens except a few chicken coops get carried away. 
It's not serious. Well, it would be if you was a chicken. <laughs> what I mean is, Harold, we could act like there's a flood, you see. We could organize a Red Cross disaster team, show the people how it'd work. Hey, that might not be a bad idea, Doc. Oh, thank you, Harold. Why, we could hold a demonstration right on Main Street, pretend it's flooded. Then we'd come rushing to the rescue in a boat. <laughs> I'll bet everybody in town would turn out to watch that. Doc, that sounds wonderful. Let's have the demonstration tonight. We can use that rowboat that's down in my cellar. I'll be the captain, naturally, since it's my boat. And you and Pete can be the crew. <laughs> All right. Say, we can get the Elks Band to play over the waves. Yeah. <laughs> and we can put a few mackerel in the boat. Mackerel? Yeah, that'd give it a sort of a sea air. <laughs> Certainly would. Well, <laughs> here are your orders, mate Yancey. Report to my cellar for lifeboat drill at three bells. Aye, aye, Captain. Neither wind nor sleet nor stormy seas will stop us. We sail tonight. Aye, aye, sir. Sailing, sailing over, over the, the bounding main street. <laughs> All right, fellas, it's getting late. I'll go over the plans once more. All right, Harry. Are you listening, Pete? Oh, I'm all ears, boy. Yes, you sure are. <laughs> now, look, my cellar here is emergency station number one. Station number one. Let me write that down. Yeah, never mind, Pete. And remember, six o'clock is zero hour. That's when we simulate that Boomer Dam breaks. Now, we go into action when we hear the signal. The signal is the six o'clock whistle at the mattress factory. And that's when we man our stations and rush over to Main Street with the robo. That's right, Doc. Mm. And we're supposed to make it down there in three minutes. Now, let's have a little rehearsal, huh? Pete, you're the lookout. Now, when the whistle blows, you run in and give us the go sign. Here we go. Toot, toot. Pete, toot, toot. Yeah, oh, toot, toot to you too, boy. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was the whistle. Yeah, oh, uh, man the stations, man, emergency. Well, okay, now remember that. Now, that's when we pick up the boat... And rush out of the cellar with it. Yeah, let me write that down. Never mind. <laughs> Pete, will you go up to your post? Yeah, okay, Captain. Now, it's almost time. Let's synchronize our watches, Doc. See, I got five minutes to six. What time do you have? One of us is wrong. I got a quarter to twelve. <laughs> Why don't you wind that turnip sometime? Now, look, I better make sure that Pete's up there outside the door listening for the signal. Pete, are you up there? I sure am. Boy. <laughs> all right. Gosh, I hope this demonstration goes all right. Oh, now don't you worry, Harold. With Pete and me to help you, it can't go wrong. Uh huh. Are you down there, Tootsie Roll? Oh, hello, Flora Bell. Oh, hello, Doctor Yancey. Good evening, Miss Flora Bell. Oh, Harold, I'm so excited. You should see the big crowd downtown waiting for my big hero. Well, guess anybody could do it. Maybe. <laughs> Oh, Captain Ham? Yeah? Uh, later on tonight, why don't you sail over to my house? We'll take a little pleasure cruise in your sloop. <laughs> okay, I'll salute over about nine o'clock. <laughs> See you later, Tessie Goodbye. <coughs> Two. One, two minutes to go, Harold. What? Oh, yes. Yeah. Now, let's make a last-minute check of the boat. See if we got everything. Let's see. First aid book, bandages, marmalade. Marmalade? I gotta get Mother some new bifocals. <coughs> Hiya, Sonny. Ye gods, old man Walker. What you doing down there in the cellar? I'm a mushroom. Oh. Look more like a Brussels sprout. <laughs> Very funny. Uh-oh. Harold, hey, there's the whistle. Yeah. Pete, that's the signal. What? Oh, uh, uh, man stations, man, the emergency. All right, crew, grab a hold of the boat. Aye, aye, sir. Me, me, sir. <laughs> Cut it out, Pete. Come on, lift her up. Here you go. Get out of the way up there, Walker. All right, now up the steps. Heave ho. Here we go. Why, we'll be downtown before you can say... Yikes. What's the matter, fellas? Her. What? She won't go through the door, boy. <laughs> How did you get the boat out of the cellar the last time? I didn't. Grandpa built it down here. <laughs> Looks like you missed the boat, Sonny. <laughs> oh, shut up! <laughs>
Well, thank you anyway for all your help, Doc. Oh, that's all right, Hair. Well, we finally got the boat out in the street anyway. Yeah. It's too bad we had to take some of the bricks out of the wall. Well, doesn't matter. We always wanted an air-conditioned cellar anyway. <laughs> well, we're over an hour late. You still want to take the boat downtown, Hare? No. They only laugh at us, Doc. Oh, man, Walker's probably down there right now telling everybody what happened. See the way he lit out of here? <sighs> I've just let the Red Cross down, Doc. Oh, now, Harold, you did your best. No. Hey, fellas! What do you want, Pete? Hey, man, the station's in emergency. Pete, we're all through simulating. I ain't stimulating, boy. Look at that water coming down the street. Water? He's right, Harold. Gosh, did Boomer Dam really break? No, but that big fire hydrant over on 2nd and Main did. What? And they need you down there with your boat right away. Why, that's wonderful. Yeah. What happened, Pete? Old man Walker was so anxious to get down and tell everybody about your trouble with the boat that he ran into the hydrant and broke it off. <laughs> <laughs> He did, eh? He serves him right. He's in four foot of water and hollering for you to bring the boat and rescue him. <laughs> well, he is, is he? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Look, Harold, the rowboat's floating. Well, get in, crew. <laughs> Man the oars, men. This is going to be a real demonstration. Red Cross team to the rescue. Hi, hi, sir. Ain't this a doozy? <laughs> Say, Mr. Walker will probably need a little first aid, fellas. Wait till I get through bandaging him. Maybe I can just rub on a little of this marmalade. Cruising <laughs> 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 down the river. <laughs> well, folks, we had a lot of fun with our simulated flood in Melrose Springs tonight. <laughs> Didn't get a chance to rub on the marmalade, though. No. <laughs> but as you all know, many serious floods and other disasters occur in our country every year. And your Red Cross has done a wonderful job in helping disaster victims with both emergency aid and long-term assistance in rebuilding shattered lives and homes. By last year alone, the Red Cross spent over $5 million in conducting 394 disaster relief operations. Remember, this is just one of the many Red Cross services. Others include assistance to servicemen and veterans, the National Blood Program, the Organization of Civil Defense, a national safety program which last year gave emergency care to thousands of American citizens, reducing injuries and saving lives. Folks, you need the Red Cross, and the Red Cross needs your help. So won't you open your heart and give, and please give generously. <laughs> You have just heard the Harold Perry Show, Honest Harold. Supporting players tonight included Jane Morgan, Parley Bayer, Cliff Arquette, Shirley Mitchell, Olin Soleil, and featured Gloria Holliday as Gloria and Joseph Kearns as old Doc Yak Yak. Norman McDonald directed, and the music was composed and conducted by Jack Meekin. Uh, Yasha Meekin. Uh, yeah. Honest Harold, created by Harold Perry, was written by Gene Stone, Jack Robinson, and Dick Powell. I typed it. <laughs> Through the years... The Red Cross has helped the victims of disaster, brought comfort to servicemen in camps and hospitals and to their families. Today, with the country rising to meet the challenge of aggression, the Red Cross has been asked by the government to undertake tremendous tasks. By giving generously to the Red Cross, you will help mobilize for the defense of your families, your community, and the nation. Give as much as you can today. Now stay tuned for The Bing Crosby Show, which follows immediately on most of these same CBS stations. Bob Lamont speaking. Good night, everybody. Good night, Bob. Good night, Harold. This is CBS, where you're thrilled with suspense on Thursday night, the Columbia Broadcasting System.